Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. If we could all stand. So good to be in church on a Wednesday night. I just got one scripture I want to share with you guys. It's If we could put it up, it's Matthew 7, verses 13 to 14. We all know it. And verse 13 says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to, destru- to destruction. And notice what it says at the end, And many, and many there be which go in thereat. There are many who are going to go in the wide gate. And sometimes we get discouraged when, sometimes we can get discouraged going through narrow gate activities, right? A narrow gate activity would be come to church on a Wednesday night. Think about your workplace. Let's say you work with 100 people. How many of those people are going to church on a Wednesday night? This is a narrow gate activity. And we can get discouraged sometimes when doing things like that, like prayer, you know, especially for high school students. You're, you're in a high school filled with people, and you're, you might be one of the only people in your entire school that take time out of your day to pray to Jesus, to pray to God, right? And we can get, sometimes it's very easy to, to get discouraged. It's very easy to get discouraged. But we cannot neglect narrow gate activities. We can't neglect the things of God. I'm so thankful for a group of people here on a Wednesday night that are narrow gate minded. Not narrow minded. <laughs> narrow gate minded. <laughs> Amen. It's not about how many people are doing it. It's not about how popular it is, but it's about, okay, God, this is what your word says. This is what your will is. Not everyone's doing this. Not everyone's going this way, but God, I'm going to do it. So can we just focus our minds on God tonight? Lord, we're so thankful for what you're doing in this world. We're so thankful for what you're doing in our city. Lord, we ask that you bless this service. We're so thankful for the opportunity to be here. In Jesus' name we pray.
never calculate the cost of the price he pray, the price he paid at the cross amen amen you may be seated amen it's at the cross amen god's so good anyone ever just think about the cross you know it's you know you see it it's very common you see it on buildings you know people wear it around their neck you see the cross everywhere but you ever just think about the cross, <laughs> what it means to us? It means different things to different people. One person was asked, you know, why do you wear that cross around your neck? Oh, I, I grew up in a Catholic church. What does that cross mean to us? Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements. Um, Friday, let's not forget about Plugged In Friday. We've been having some awesome times there from between the ages of 12 and 18. Um, let's not forget about that. Also, March 16th, uh, 12 p.m., I believe, is the ladies' luncheon, correct? Yeah, so uh, March 16th, 12 p.m., is the ladies' luncheon. Men, we are not invited, um, so remember that. Um, but all ladies who are interested, um, you can talk to Sister Chevry for more details on that. We're just going to pray. We're going to get right back into service, but maybe if we could just think about the cross. Think about the cross for the remainder of this, this worship set. Everything revolves around the cross. Everything revolves around what he did for us. It's not what we can do. It's not about our works. You can work as hard as you want. You can put as many hours in as you want at work. You'll never be able to outwork the cross. Lord, we're so thankful for what you did on Calvary. God, we view the cross differently. We want to view the cross differently, God. It's just not something on a church. It's not just something that's on the steeple of a church. But God, it's everything to us. And Lord... We just want to focus on your sacrifice tonight, God. We're so thankful for what you did. We ask that you bless the remainder of the service. In Jesus' name we pray.
hearts adore you as we bow before you. There's no one like our God. Oh, sing holy, holy to my one and only. Oh, who is like our God? Oh, yes. Let our hearts adore you as we bow. Sing with 
Yeah. Praise God. How great is our God? How great is our God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God in Jesus name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Praise God. How great and how wonderful is our God. Amen. Praise God. You may be seated. It's great to see everybody here tonight. Brother Matt, it's so good to see you. I've been in contact with our superintendent, Brother McLaughlin, and he's been in contact with the agent, and he said he's getting me the contact information to put a very impactful letter together. So with the process has started, let's see where that goes. God wills, hopefully we will have a new church. If not, welcome to the Pentecostal Windsor, 7380 Wyandotte Street East. Praise God. I brought a few concerns to Brother McLaughlin, who is a contractor, and he said, bro, bro, they're cosmetic. We can take care of those. I said, well, it hasn't got AC. No problem. We can take care of that. I said, well, need windows. Pro, that's cosmetic. Brother McLaughlin is, um, he can negotiate. And he, he has done great, he's doing great things for our camp. He is, he's really developed our camp. And uh, if he's watching publicly tonight, he is from PEI. Not the good end, but he's from PEI. <laughs> I'm from the good end. He's from the hood. If PEI had a hood, that's where he's from. Praise God. I'm from Surrey, P-E-I. Surrey means mice in French. He's from Stan Hope, where there is no hope. <laughs> Praise God. So, Brother Matt, we're excited to see what God can do. And thank you for everything you're doing for us and done for us. We appreciate that. And God can do wonderful things. Amen. John chapter number 8. It's so good to see everybody here today. Praise God. John 8 and verse number 32 says... Now, this is Jesus talking, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Praise God. I want to talk on the subject tonight, the case for truth. I believe in truth. I believe in truth. How about you today? Praise God. Lord, we're thankful for your grace today. We're thankful for your mercy. We're thankful you that you are the only wise and true and living God. Beside you, there is no other. God, you are the creator of all things. All things have by been created by you. We thank you for that. Bless your word. Bless your people. Let your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We're living in a really peculiar time in our history. This time we're living in in 2024. There's what they call no absolute truth. No absolute truth. Out of our colleges and universities, out of our academia, academia, they teach that there's no absolute truth anymore. I got a degree from university. My major is religious studies. And they told us in religious studies class at the university, there's no absolute truth. Pick a God, any God. That's your path, you go that way. If you can't find a God or if you don't believe a God, you become a God. Hollywood teaches that. Some of our actors and actors think they're gods. Yeah, right. And so we're living in this generation that truth is viewed with suspicion. Those who declare truth are viewed with suspicion. We're called narrow-minded. We're called brainwashed. We're called cult. We're called all kinds of bad names. You can't have an absolute truth in this generation without facing ridicule. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and life. And I believe that Jesus himself faced it ridicule because 
who he declared he was. He faced ridicule from his own people who were looking for the Messiah, and they would not accept him. They rejected him. He was rejected by all men. But Jesus said this bold statement in John 14 and 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Wow. What a, what a bold proclamation. If he's not God, he's pretty arrogant. If he's not God, he's pretty prideful. But if he is God, which I believe, then indeed he is the way. He is the truth and the life. Praise God. Beside him there is no other. <coughs> People are trying to figure out the nature of God. Is there one God? Is there two gods? Is there three gods? Is there a million gods? Is there no gods? I'm not quite sure if there is a God. It's just that our society is, is totally gone berserk in trying to find out who God is, what God is. Some deny the very existence of any form of a God. Some are not quite sure, but we as believers, we ought to be sure that there's a God and that he saved us, that he loved us, he walks in amongst us and does great things. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What a proclamation. Confucius said, I don't know the truth. Muhammad said, I don't know the truth. Joseph Smith said, I don't know the truth. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I'm a follower of Jesus. How about you? So if we are a follower of Jesus, we're a follower of the way. You know, Christians were first called the people of the way. They weren't called Christians till years later in a little place called Antioch. But before that, they were called the people of the way. What do you mean the people of the way? They're following Jesus because he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm here today to defend the case for truth. There is an absolute truth. There is a God who loves us, died for us, shed his blood for us, lives inside of us through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To know Jesus is to know truth. I'm not searching for another truth. I don't got to read the Confucius to Analects, although I've read them. If you can't get to sleep, read them. They'll put you to sleep. I don't go to read the Quran to find a truth. I've read the Quran, but I, have, I don't have to read the Quran to find truth. I read it because I couldn't sleep. Two minutes later, I went to sleep. There's no inspiration there. I don't got to read the Gita and try to figure out if there's a million gods. I just need to read the Bible, the Word of God. It's alive. It brings life. I'm not looking for truth in any other source but the scriptures. You look for truth in other places, you're going to get totally confused. What did Paul warn the church? Don't let any man spoil you with vain philosophy. Vain philosophy is what came first, the chicken or the egg? It doesn't matter. They're both here. Somebody said to me last night, said, why am I alive? A young girl asked me that last night. My friend I asked, why am I alive? A 12-year-old asked me, why am I alive? I said, it's not the matter of why you're alive. It's what you're going to do with your life that matters. You're already here. You're already breathing. You're already alive. That's not the question. Your life, what are you going to do with your life? The most important thing for any man, woman, and child is not try to figure out where you came from, but be thankful you're here and say, God, I know I'm here. Randy Descartes said, I think, therefore, I am. He didn't know whether he existed or not. He went into an oven for three days and fasted and tried to realize, do I really exist or am I an illusion? Isn't that stupid? Hey, Rennie, look in the mirror. Who do you see? Myself. For three days, he was in an oven. And he came out after the third day. And he said, I think, therefore I am. It took you three days to realize that. What were you doing there for three days? Not thinking? But he said, because I have a conscience, therefore I exist. So 
the question is already established. We exist. You're here. Pinch yourself. Ow! If I don't really exist, but we exist. The question is, why are we here? What is our purpose? Our purpose as human beings is to get to know Jesus Christ. To surrender our life for him. He's given us an opportunity. When we were born, he gave us an opportunity for eternal life <coughs> through him. By him. And not beyond him. Without him, there's no eternal life. Without him, there's no life. We just exist. But when you know Jesus, you have a life. Because he is the life, the way, and the truth. So Paul <coughs> made a declaration to his son in the faith. Second Timothy 4 and 2, and I like what the New, New International Version likes. I, I prefer the King James Version, folks, but I'm going to read the NIV because it it's, makes it it's, it's a little more clear. I, I like what one guy said, I believe in the King James Version. It was good for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. Praise God. The King James Version, they come out to 1611, 70 scholars got together, took the original transcripts and transferred them over to 1611 language, that's why we get words like, there, verily, verily, because it's King James language. I prefer the King James language. It's so spiritual and powerful when you use it at Tim Hortons or somewhere. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto thee, can I have an Earl Grey tea with one cream? <laughs> Saith the Lord. I'm only kidding. NIV in the second Timothy 4 and 2 says, preach the word. Brother Grant, preach the word. Brother Mike, Brother Ryman, Brother Noel, Brother Moss, preach the word. Preach the word. If you're called to preach, don't stoop to be a king. If you're called to preach, don't, don't stoop to become a multimillionaire without God. But do what you're called to do. Preach the word. Be prepared in season and out of season. I appreciate our young people. I drop them on. I'll, I'll ask them Wednesday, can you preach for us Sunday night? I want a burn burner on Sunday night. And our young people are always ready and willing. Thank God for that. They're, they're prepared in season and out of season. Correct. Paul told the church, Paul, Timothy, when you're preaching, you've got to do some correction. Rebuke. Now, those are heavy sermons where you get some put you in the crosshairs and rebukes you. But I thank God for those messages where I got my knuckles wrapped. <coughs> Encourage with great patience. Somebody spoke on patience here just a while ago. With great patience and careful instruction, preach the word. I'm, it's repeating. I repeated it. The second part was really good. Look it up yourself. There's going to be a time coming that Paul said to Timothy that people are not going to like the preacher they have. So they'll go over here and say, make me feel good, preacher. Don't preach about my sin, but tell me how good I am and how good I'm doing. And then he preaches a message that may rebuke or correct or encourage, and we fly off over here. I thank God for the times I heard messages where guys had my number and preached to me exactly what I didn't want to hear, but told me exactly what I needed to hear without fear or favor. I thank God for those messages where I'm encouraged and I mean, leave here just all encouraged, but there's sometimes that God, through his word, has to correct us. The reason why he corrects us is not because he's, he doesn't like you, it's because he loves you. As a son chastises, a father chastises his father, so God chastises us sometimes, rebukes us sometimes. It's for our own good. Praise God. When my kids were small, I, I had to watch them constantly, especially when we lived on Dundas Street and big streets. We'd have to watch them. Think, don't go there. Don't. We, it's, we weren't restricting them. Oh, Dad, you're restricting me. No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to keep you safe. Preacher, don't preach. You're restricting me. Preacher, you're putting me under bondage. No, we're trying to do what's good for you, to help you, to correct you, to lead you, and to guide you. Paul said, preach the word. I wish I had that second one. I don't know why I, did, I duplicated that. What a dumb thing to do. We are bound to preach the truth. We're bound 
to teach the truth, and we're bound to obey the truth. Thank God for truth. I can say to universities and professors, and there is an absolute truth. That's Jesus Christ, who brings life, forgiveness, hope, purity to the listeners. We're living in a, in a generation in Christendom where they don't like, maybe likes make me feel good preacher sermons, or I call them pom-pom sermons. Go team, go team, go team. Do what you want. Go where you want. Go team, go team. We're all going to heaven. Well, there's sometimes you say, bro, let pick on portal. Jesse, be careful what you do, bro. Be careful where you go. Watch your spirit. Watch your heart. Get a pure heart before God. Get an honest heart before God. I thank God for those people that have read my life and said, pray through, young man. Imagine a preacher telling me that. Pray through, young man. I thank God I listen to those older preachers. Thank God. Thank God. Third John chapter or verse number four says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. No greater joy than my children walk in truth. The success of the ministry and being a Christian is that somebody walks in truth because of you and I. That's the success of ministry. <coughs> I've had this thing for a month, and Buckley says, I'm killing this. I'm hopeless. I'm doomed like Scrooge. I've drank Buckley's. Jesus, does that mean anything? Praise God. People want to preach conferences. I told the district board, I don't give a hoot if I ever pre preach a conference. And they look at me like I'm weird. I told the district board this last fall, I, said, I don't really care if I preach a district, at a conference. That's not my goal. And they looked at me like, whatever you're smoking, change your brand. And I'm serious. I don't care if I preach a conference. That's not my goal, Brother Moss. My goal is to impact somebody, to provoke in them a desire to love truth, to embrace, embrace truth. And no greater joy than I have to hear my children walk in truth, my physical children and my spiritual children. I told you last summer I was at camp, and a lady grabbed me by the arm and said, I want to tell you something. Now, if lady grabs you by the arm, see, the one or two things are going to happen. She's going to beat the stuff in you, or she's going to give you a compliment. But she looks, I want to tell you something. My kids are in senior Bible quizzing because of you. That's a success. That's success. Not some big conference. We have come in to preach for us. Brother Mark Shivery, let's put our hands together. <laughs> let's do our pictures together. I don't do pictures together. I'm sorry. I had a preacher, one of our top preachers, and I'm getting a pre picture taken with them. I'm saying, I hate this. While we're taking a picture, I, I'm saying, I hate this. This is stupid. You don't need a picture of you and I. Let's glorify Jesus. Let's magnify Jesus. Praise God. I don't, I don't need to be in the limelight. I don't need the light. I just need to walk in the light as he is in the light and have fellowship one with another. In the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hear that out there? You bunch of crazy guys. If I don't preach a conference, I'm not going. <clears throat> I'm like, really? I can't see Jesus doing that. They didn't invite me. Peter, let's go to Sea of Galilee. No. Anyhow. Oh, I want to be a successful Christian before I'm a pastor. I want somebody to love truth. Praise God. And I've told these young guys, and I've told them publicly, and I mean it with all of my heart, I want them to be better preachers than me. Brother Grant, I want, I want you to leave me in the dust because... I'm successful if you're better than I am. Mike, Ryman, but all of you guys, if you're better than me, I'm successful. But if I view you as competition, I'm a nimrod. 
I lost the whole point of this. I lost the whole point. Elijah mentored Elisha. And Elijah did more miracles than Elijah. Because Elijah mentored, without intimidation, Elisha. And my success is that somebody takes off the mantle and preaches truth and loves truth and walks in truth. I'm successful. And I can say on that day, Lord, I've done what you've called me to do. Somebody today is preaching truth today. That we've got to duplicate ourselves. We've got to invest ourselves in somebody else. Find somebody to mentor. Find somebody to lead them to Jesus Christ. Find somebody that you can, you can through friendship and prayer and, and fellowship, develop inside them a desire to love God like you love God. It's not a competition. The church is not a competition. It's not a competition. It's that Jesus would be exalted, that Jesus would be promoted, that truth would be loved, that truth would be embraced, that truth would be declared. Praise God. And that truth, we can declare truth, but folks, you also need confirmation. Read this, Mark 16 and 15, the verse number 20. I love this scripture. This is based upon the declaration of truth. Here's the confirmation. Verse 15 of Mark 16. Did I put that there? I meant to. I didn't. I've had a terrible day. I've got a head cold. And he said unto them, them, you guys are them. I don't got to do nothing. I don't pastor. My pastor has to do everything. I come to church, hear a good sermon, hear a meteoric sermon, hear a terrible sermon. I go home. No. Nope. And he said unto them, the church, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That is your mandate. And verse number 16. He that believeth by the mosque be great, and is baptized shall be saved. Hey, stop right there for a second. I am going to preach repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, and being filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the first message in the church. The birthday of the church. That was the first message, Peter, Acts 2 and 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. We baptized Roma's um, sister-in-law down in Florida. We had no place for the pool. So we got permission off all these northerners. Can we baptize somebody here today? They said, well, okay. They'd never seen it before. It was a little awkward, but it was beautiful. We baptized Cheryl in Jesus' name. She went down in the water, came out just glowing, glowing. And then those ladies swam over to me, can you bless us too? <laughs> and I went over, there's a lady from Boston. She was Irish. She said, I'm baptized. My kids are baptized. And my grandkids are baptized. With tears in her eyes, she says, I've never seen anything like that before in my life. I said, you're based at a church at the Rome, right? She goes, yes. Irish Catholic, beautiful lady. I said, all I'm doing is preaching. You believe Peter's your pope, right? She goes, yeah. I said, all I'm doing is preaching what Peter preached. Then I quote her Acts 2.38. I just quoted you guys. And she went, I've never heard that before. I should have grabbed her and thrown her in the pool in Jesus' name. <laughs> he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. I'm going to preach baptism in Jesus' name until the day I die. But he that believe it not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, listen to this, in my name, that's singular, they cast out devils, they speak with new tongues. <coughs> Sorry, guys. They shall take up serpents, not on purpose. <laughs> you hillbillies. Let's see if you're in the faith. Get the boa constrictor. Let's see if Grant's in the faith. Chump, I didn't think he was. I didn't think he was. This is accidental touching a serpent, okay? So don't go to the nearest pet shop and come to church Sunday morning. Bro, I think I got faith. <laughs> we'll have a new door in the church right about there because I'm leading it. And if they drink any of thing, now don't go to your curb, take a bat of your ass and go, Jesus said, if I drink any dead thing, it won't harm me. Cheers, Jesus. So this is accidental. 
if you drink my coffee accidental, you'll be okay. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Praise God. This is, the, this is based upon the, the confirmation and the proclamation that we're having God working with us. Listen to this. So then after the Lord had spoken on them, he received them up, in the, he was, he was received up to heaven and sat at the right hand of God. That signifies power. God is a spirit, John 4 and 24. That signifies power. And they went forth and preached everywhere. Obedience. The Lord worked with them and confirmed the words with signs following. Amen. Because they proclaimed truth, then God confirmed truth by signs and wonders. We don't follow signs. Signs follow us. People who follow after signs don't have faith. Show me a sign or miracle and I will believe. Faithful people say they follow us. I believe. And then comes the miracles and signs and wonders. Don't put the cart ahead of the horse. A scientist uses, uh, I, I hope I can pronounce this word, hypothesis? What is it? I wrote this down. I can't even say the word. Oh, I hate English. A science can offer a hippopotamus. <laughs> but they must prove that pr proposition by providing overwhelming evidence to support the hippo. Does that make sense, you guys? I think I've studied in my lab. Here's what I suggest. Well, that suggestion falls short unless... There's overwhelming evidence to support what you suggest. When the evidence is not there, it remains an unproven theory. It's, it's not proven. But <coughs> if you have evidence to support your hippo, it's no longer an unproven theory. It now becomes a fact because of the proof that's in the pudding. I believe that Jesus can save. That's my proclamation. That's my hippo. Jesus saves is evidence of what I proclaimed. I believe that Jesus can heal. That's my hippo. But when Jesus heals, that's the evidence of what I suggested, that Jesus can heal. God can take your burdens and set you free. That's what we proclaim. But the confirmation is this. God takes your burdens and sets you free. That's the power of your testimony. It's not just we lost a, a, a full contact Bible study, but the power of our testimony is we were lost, but now we're found. We were blind, but now we see. We were oppressed, but now we're set free. The power of our testimony is we were without Jesus Christ with no hope, but now we're in Jesus where there's hope. This is, the, this is, this is the, the defense of the truth tonight. This is what I'm saying, the case for truth. We can proclaim truth. But we need that confirmation of truth that God is in the midst of us doing great and wonderful things. <coughs> and the power of the early church was that God worked with them, confirming the word with signs following. Because some people in Christianity they teach there's no more signs, there's no more wonders, there's no more miracles, there's no more provision. God is silent. God doesn't do anything anymore. Well, you're, you're too late because I believe in miracles. I believe in healing. I believe in deliverance. I believe that God can set people free instantaneously. Praise God. I believe that God can reach down. And, and I, I was at the altar when, when Mohawk came to church. A bad alcoholic with a stuttering problem. I was in the church when Mohawk came. Alan and Lanka, we call him Mohawk. Not sure, sure why we call him Mohawk. But I was there in the church. My wife was there. When Mohawk came to church crying, drunken state, a stutter, hit the altar and repent of his sins. And then he began to talk without stuttering. Well, I watched this and right in front of my eyes. And Alan and grabbed his mouth and goes, I'm not stuttering. The first time in his life. He wasn't stuttering. He was touched by the power of God. So you can't tell me that God can't do miracles. 
that God can't heal, that God can't deliver, that God's no longer doing great things. God is doing great and wonderful things. We proclaim it. The church proclaim, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. We proclaim truth, but as equal as the proclamation is the confirmation. Here's the candy stick. We tell people, come to church, pay your tithes, and God will bless you. We, we, we say that. We proclaim, proclaim that. But then God confirms by blessing those who give and tithe. You, you come to church and you're a total mess. Come to the Lord. He'll straighten you out. We proclaim that prophetically, that God will. Our proclamation is prophetic. It's prophetic. It's, it's not mystical. It's not weird. It's not funky. It's not out there where the air is rare. Our proclamations are prophetic. I'm going to give my life to God. A self-proclamation. I'm going to give myself to God and see what he can do. And God does great things and wonderful things. So God confirms his word. So we as, a, as, as preachers and as faithful saints, we, 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 we proclaim prophetically. I was talking to Brother McLaughlin today and if this deal doesn't work out for, over in Roseland Drive, we're believing God for a miracle on another building. God can do anything. We need a new building. Praise God. We need a bathroom on the main floor. Praise God. We need, we need more seats on Sunday morning. We, we need more room. My wife has a beautiful little office. But we need a bigger office. Oh, boy. Not because she's big. It's just because she's a bigger office. Praise God. <laughs> Matt, you got company tonight. <laughs> I need a big... Oh, I just got to look. <laughs> Jesus, coming home, coming home. Never more to roam. Open wide those gates of pearl. My wife is going to make me her own. Coming home. Praise God. I'm only kidding. I need a bigger office. Oh, boys. <laughs> Some hot in here. Does anybody else notice that it got hot in here, or it's just me? Just me. I am going to prove to you tonight that to live in the Lord and to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. The Lord working with them and confirming the signs follow. Amen. We preach Jesus. We preach Jesus to the atheist, to the agnostic, to the atheist. We preach Jesus. In the church, at work, we preach Jesus. At the restaurants, we preach Jesus. I had a young guy come up to me a couple weeks ago and goes, you're part of some church group, ain't you? I said, yeah, 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 I am. He goes, well, I, I need a church to go to. I said, well, we have church Sunday at 11. He said, I, I might come check you out. I was talking to a young man. I'm, I'm, I'm always preaching, not just behind here. I'm always preaching, okay? Telling people about the Lord. But a young man came to, to cut our tree down. But they can't cut our tree down until they get rid of the owl and the little owl eggs. And we got talking. He said, I, I'm searching, I'm searching for, for God. He said, I, I really want to know who he is. And, what he is. And that's a platform for a preacher, isn't it? Uh, I said, well, you've got to come to church. He said, it's, it's, it's a lively church. He said, that's what I'm looking for. Hey, don't be ashamed to be a Pentecostal. Don't be ashamed to be being crazy about the Lord. Don't be ashamed of our music and our mode of worship. That's what people are looking for. That's what people are looking for. He said, I, I want to come out. I said, will you come out? He said, we have a lot of young people. You guys got young. He, he was so shocked by the moss. He said, you got young people? I said, yeah. He said, there's a lot of young people coming here. A lot of our music is, is young people. He was shocked. Because most churches are reserved for those who are cramming for the finals. Live like hellions all their life. 
in the last five or six years of their life, they get right holy, go to church, trying to impress God and pull it over God's eyes. God watches us all throughout our life. So they're cramming for the finals, hoping that they can squeeze by and, and they'll be in heaven before God knows, where'd you come from? He knows his own. And the young guy said, you guys said, young people? I said, yeah. I said, you, you got to come up. And, and I told him, and, and uh, we got talking, and isn't God so good? He's indigenous. Drake, he's indigenous. He says, my mom is, is an Algonquin, and my dad is, I forget what his dad was, some other tribe. I said, well, I'm, I'm indigenous, I'm status. And he went, Wow. This is how God pulls us together. Praise God. You should know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Love the truth. Ask God to give you a desire to love truth. If you don't love the truth, God will send you a strong delusion, and you will believe a lie. You will be deceived. You will be lost. But if you love the truth, walk in the truth, embrace the truth, teach the truth, preach the truth, God will work with you. Praise God. I, I came to the church. I didn't know anything about scriptures and, and all that stuff, but I just by faith received what they told me. I repent of my sins by faith. I mean, I knew I had a lot of sins to repent of. That was an easy one to grasp. Okay, repent of your sins. Well, how much time do you have? Here we go. And God's going, forgiven, forgiven, stop it, forgiven. I thought you did that. Forgiven? Then by faith, I was baptized in Jesus' name. I wasn't a scholar. I didn't understand it. They told me, now your sins are gone. You didn't wash them away. Acts 22 and 16. So I went, and I got baptized. And I remember that feeling, December 5th, 1982, off the coast of PEI. Oh, I felt so liberated. I felt so light. I felt so, wow. I felt like, wow, I should have done this when I was born. I felt so good. And then they said, you're going to get the Holy Ghost. And I said, that's cool. What, what is that? And, you know, I thought the Holy Ghost is some little mystical guy out there floating around like Gasper. I didn't have a clue. I said, what's the Holy Ghost? Oh, they said, that's going to be God inside of you. I said, wow. And they, and they said, do you know how we could tell? I said, I said, what? He said, read the scriptures. And they showed me the scriptures. Acts 2, 1 through 4, Mark 16. Acts 10, 44 to 48. Isaiah 28 and 11, they showed me all these scriptures that those who received the Holy Ghost in the New Testament begin to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gives them the utterance. And I said, far out! Wow! This is going to be quite a trip. So January 7th, 1983, at 8.30 in the evening, God filled me with the Holy Ghost, Grant. Filled me with the Holy Ghost. They say I lit up like a light bulb. Praise God. And this feeling came over me so warm. And I'm, Wow! That was this Friday night. We had church on a Friday night, revival. I went to church mon or school Monday morning, walking through the uh, high school corridor, and I stopped all by myself. I said, God's inside of me. I'm like, wow, it, it hit me right between the blinkers. God's inside of me. I don't got to party. I don't got to drink. I don't got to act up. I don't got to be mouthy. Okay, I'll take you to the mouthy part later. I don't got to be a Nimrod no more. I got a reason to go to school. I got a reason to, to walk the quarters. I've got a hope. I've got a life. I've, I've got a purpose now. God's inside of me. Praise God. Outside of room 10, second floor of the high school, I had an epiphany that God was inside of me. Since then, they've turned the high school down, but it's in my spirit. I remember that day. All the students went in the class. And of course, I was outside the class, having an epiphany of. Wow, God's inside of me. This works. This works. That was over 40 years ago. It works when you surrender to God and love truth, embrace truth. This works, folks. This is not a fad. This is not a, a hype. This is not, it's more than that. It's, it's our lifestyle. Praise God. Sorry, sweetie. You still love me? Praise God. I made my apology Sunday morning, right? Did I make my, that I did with my indulgences already? Good, I'm, I'm safe then. I already apologized for what I was going to say. Praise God. Oh, let's stand before I see something else. <laughs> Praise God. 
this hoof and mouth disease, Buckley's can't touch it. It's not deadly or fatal, but it potentially could be. I got this disease, Brother Grant. Do you have it? Oh, I knew why I liked him for a reason. You just, your wife says to you, what were you thinking? I wasn't. <laughs> what made you say that? And you want to pull off a red skeleton and say, the devil made me do it. <laughs> but the devil says, I'm not touching that with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> Buddy, you're on your own. You're on your own. I fought God and, lo and lost. He said, I ain't touching no woman. Praise God. Well, our case for the truth. Love the truth. Love the truth. Praise God. You ready? Come on up. Oh, my word. Did I keep you guys that long? I'm sorry. Man, it's after 8 o'clock. Lord, help me. To... I, I was preaching in London one time. I said, Lord, loosen my tongue, but not too loose. <laughs> in Jesus' name. God bless you. Love you all. Amen. Truth is the most valuable thing we have. Lord, we're thankful for your goodness and your grace. We ask that you bless us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name we pray. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.